Hi, everybody. My name's Amy Vega. Welcome back to Holy Spirit Revealed This Today. I'm going to be talking about what I've been shown over this past week in God's Word and confirmations um, through biblical numbers and scriptures. Um, and I'll also share with you some supernatural signs and wonders that I've seen up in the skies this week. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I give all glory to God and all honor to God for everything that I'm going to share today and for this video and for this ministry. So thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray. Uh, Lord, I just want to release your glory over each person that is watching this recording and release your healing upon their bodies from the tops of their heads to the bottom of their feet in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I dispatch your warring angels, your communication angels, your camouflage angels to protect this video recording, to place a hedge of protection around me, my family, my home, around all who are watching this recording, and to hide this video from the enemy. I declare Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us we shall show to be in the wrong. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall in any way harm you. And Matthew 16, 19 says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So right now, Father, I sever all witchcraft off of me, my family, off all who are watching this video, off of our homes, our ministries, off of our social media platforms. I bind every demon and render it deaf, dumb, blind, and paralyzed. I bind and forbid every demon from manifesting in our homes, against our family members, against their homes, against our health, against our pet's health, against our electronics, against this video, against my pictures, because this is take three on this video now, <laughs> trying to get this done, um, against our electrical wiring in our homes and against our vehicles. In the name of Jesus, I bind and forbid you from sabotaging this broadcast in any way, shape, or form or our social media platforms. Only the Holy Spirit can manifest here in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to refer to my notes here as I'm sharing things with you. On April 3rd, I was led to Zechariah 1. I titled it, Draw Near to God and He Will Draw Near to You. And this is what I wrote. I wrote, Holy Spirit led me to Zechariah 1 today. Today, the process was different again. He told me to turn to Haggai, then told me to turn one page. And I found myself at Zechariah 1. And I wrote, God is calling the remnant. He is delivering from Babylon, which would be today's mystery Babylon or the N-W-O gang. To freely choose him, return to him with all of our hearts repent and rebuild our relationship with him in return he promises to crush our enemies bring peace to our land and restore us so james 4 verse 8 stands out today draw near to god and he will draw near to you i find that to be so true every time i have a question in my heart um or i'm even just thinking about something i find that he will bring me the answer um so one of the things was i said to him um lord um, I don't want to just imagine what you look like. I want to see you. I don't want to just see bright light. Um, I want to see details. And so he's been actually showing me in the himself in the clouds, which I'll show you at the end of this video. Um, he showed him, he, he um, appeared um, and, and showed himself to me in my backyard um, on the day of the eclipse, which was yesterday. So amazing. Uh, and I was listening to Julie Green today, and she was saying how um, yesterday was not about the enemy. It was about Jesus. And boy, did he show up. I mean, it's amazing. Wait till you see it. That's probably why I'm on take three of this video now, because like it literally, I, I was talking. I went to go show you all my pictures, and they were gone. So, mm, okay. So anyway. All right. So. They're going to be there this time in Jesus name. All right. So Zechariah one verses one through six in the message translation stood out to me in the eighth month of the second year in the reign of Darius, God's message came from the prophet Zechariah, son of Berechiah, son of Edo. God was very angry with your ancestors. So give to the people this message from God of the angel armies. Come back to me and I'll come back to you. Don't be like your parents. The old time prophets called out to them. 
a message from God of the angel armies. Leave your evil life. Quit your evil practices. But they ignored everything I said to them, stubbornly refused to listen. And where are your ancestors now, dead and buried? And the prophets who preached to them? Also dead and buried. But the message that my servants, the prophets, spoke, that isn't dead or buried. That message did its work on your ancestors, did it not? It woke them up and they came back, saying, he did what he said he would do. Sure enough, we didn't get by with a thing. So, all right. So when I posted this on X, I received a timestamp of 1039. Um, and I thought to look up scripture for uh, Matthew 1039, which confirmed the message. And I see that I forgot to put that in my notes here. So look up Matthew 1039 and you'll see what that says. All right. But Psalm 103, it also um, applied. And um, so, yeah, because I looked up, so 1039, I looked up one Psalm 103 verse nine, and I realized that that applied. So I took the whole Psalm 103 which goes like this, bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deepest within me. Bless his holy name, bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of all his benefits, who forgives every one of all your iniquities, who heals each one of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and corruption, who beautifies, dignifies, and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth, your necessity and desire at your personal age and situation with good so that your youth renewed is like the eagles, strong, overcoming, soaring. The Lord executes righteousness and justice, not for me only, but for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways of righteousness and justice to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy and loving kindness. He will not always chide or be contending. Neither will he keep his anger forever or hold a grudge. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us for ac according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great are his mercy and loving kindness towards those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he re has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father loves and pities his children, so the Lord loves and pities those who fear him with reverence, worship, and awe. For he knows our frame. He earnestly remembers and imprints on his heart that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it and it is gone. Its place shall be known. In its place shall know it no more. But the mercy and loving kindness of the Lord are from everlasting to everlasting upon those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. And his righteousness is to children's children, to such, as, to such as keep his covenant, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying it, and to those who earnestly remember his commandments to do them, imprinting them on their hearts. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, all you hosts, all you his hosts, you his ministers who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul. So, and then when I was referencing my phone, I was looking at my phone, what I posted on X so that I could put it in my blog. And um, I got another timestamp of 1222, which always leads me back to Job 1222. He uncovers deep things out of darkness and brings into light black gloom and the shadow of death. So we are in the great awakening and we're moving from dark to light. All right. On April 4th, I was led to Isaiah 4. We will be called holy. Holy Spirit led me with eyes closed to Isaiah 4 for the fifth time. For the remnant preserved through judgment, the branch of the Lord Jesus will bring fruitfulness and life to us who trust and believe in him. We will be cleansed from all unrighteousness and set apart for the Lord. We will be called holy. So Isaiah 4, verse 2 through 6 in the CEV version stood out. The time is coming when the Lord will make 
his land fruitful and glorious again. And the people of Israel who survive will take great pride in what the land produces. Everyone who is left alive in Jerusalem will be called special. After the Lord sends a fiery judgment to cleanse the city and its people of their violent deeds, then the Lord will cover the whole city and its meeting places with a thick cloud each day and with a flaming fire each night. God's own glory will be like a huge tent that covers everything. It will provide shade from the heat of the sun in a place of shelter and protection from storms and rain. Amazing times we're living in. We have a lot to look forward to. All right. So prophetic numbers, I was shown Isaiah 4 on the 4th. So he's done that a lot with me where he's showing me scripture chapters that match the date. Um, and so four is being highlighted. So four biblically um, is God stamps four on things that have to do with all the world. He uses four to mark uh, when he is doing something with his creation, which he most certainly is right now. Um, I was also shown this scripture for the fifth time. Five is the grace of God. God gives us the ability to overcome the valley of the shadow of death. We're given authority of Christ to conquer any situation that the enemy would use to, to try to take us out. And when I posted this message on X, I received a timestamp of 1116, which also confirmed the message and also those numbers confirm. So 11 being judgment upon disorder, transition, God recognizes the faithfulness of his people, valor, acts of courage, and 16 is the love of God. So everything he does is because he loves us. Isaiah 11 verse 16 was the scripture that I found that confirmed um, there will be a highway for the remnant of his people who remain from Assyria, as there was for Israel when they came up from the land of Egypt. So we're in another exodus here. So that definitely applies. All right. So let me share with you. All right. Now, I wanted to show you. Um, with drawings on them. But the problem was when I when I try to show with the drawings on them, it ends up being too many pictures and the computer just closes them all up and I get stuck having to do this again. So bear with me. Um, I have posted these on my blog. And so if you will go to my blog and click on each picture, you'll be able to see where I've done drawing um, if you have a hard time seeing what I'm seeing. Okay, so I'm going to just follow my cursor and um, I'll show you what we got here. So this is either an angel or a host. And you can clearly see like a human face here. So here's the eye right here. Here is the nose, the nostrils, the nose area. And here are the lips. So I'll back it up and let you look at that for a minute. So the eye, nose, mouth. So here's the chin right here. So basically his face is right here. Here's another view of him. So here's his eye right here, his nose. You can actually see his nostrils in his mouth. And someone said you could actually see his teeth. So it looks like you can see his teeth right here. <laughs> it's incredible. Just absolutely incredible. Now this one I did put the drawing on so you can see him because it was a little bit harder to see. So he's looking to the right here. So where his eye is going to be, nose, mouth, chin. Okay, so watch for that in the next picture. All right, so here he is. So um, like this is his hair right here. You can just kind of get a, an idea of what you're looking at here. Here's his eye right here where my cursor is. Here's his nose. Here's his lips. His mouth is open. Here's his chin. And you can actually see um, within him, you can see hosts. Let's 
So right here, you, like you can see an eye, you can see a big nose, mouth. I'm not sure if it's a host or an evil dude. Um, if because there's a lot of warfare going on up there, but looks like you can see a lion right here too. So anyway, if you go to my um, blog, you'll be able to look at him more closely and kind of see what's going on in there. And here's another host. And so he's he's looking down and he's looking to the right here. Okay. So his eye is up in this area right here. And this is like his nose, his nostrils right here. And here's his mouth. And here's the chin. And his chest right here, his neck area, his chest. Okay. So this reminds me of um, like the one that I saw over my roof a while back that was similar to what Barry Wunsch described of some hosts that were at a place in a country in a tunnel pulling out some assets and things that the enemy had hidden that have to do, I think, with the wealth transfer uh, that's coming. And um, the hosts are big and mean and look like they could do, you know, take care of business. So a lot of these hosts do look kind of fierce looking. I think he looks like that. Um, and then I looked out and saw this. It's like a whirlwind. There's a host up here that's hard to see right now, but he was blowing and it's like a whirlwind coming out of him. And there's a rainbow host here. And very interesting because um, I don't remember if it was Diana Larkin or Wanda Elger that was talking about the, um, the whirlwinds. I think it was Wanda Elger had a word about the fire of God coming and to watch for the whirlwinds. Um, and look at that. Amazing. So it's like a whirlwind rainbow host. All right. And then as I was watching, I was watching the episode of Julie Green that had um, Larry Ballard on. Larry Ballard is um, a prophetic person that died, went to heaven, and the Lord gave him an assignment um, that has to do with our times right now. So the Lord's been having him study things for years and has kept him silent for the most part on a lot of it until now. Um, it's appropriate for now and people will actually listen to him now, he said. So, um, and it was about the eclipse. So he was talking about that. And this, this was on the 4th. So if you can find that episode on Julie Green's Rumble. Um, so the guy's name is Larry Ballard. But anyway, just as they had, just as they had a picture of the eclipse um, up on their screen, and they were talking about the Aleph, the, the letter that's like an A on its side. It's the Hebrew letter Aleph. I'm not kidding you. I looked out my window. And look at that. Can't even, it's like, I feel like God just is watching me 24 <laughs> seven and knows everything that I'm doing and thinking and like showing me stuff. It's just so cool. It's so amazing. But here's the Aleph. Totally awesome. And it was timed right with that, which is so amazing. And then this one, um, there's a tall host right here. And so if I, it's like, it's almost like a bunch of whirlwind hosts, to be honest. We're supposed to be watching for the whirlwinds. So look at all these. They're like little tornado hosts. Okay. But what was kind of cool about this one, like you can see um, like the an eye right here and nose, the mouth is open. And then here you can see an eye. Here's his mouth right here. Um, if you look on my blog, you'll see where I did some drawing on it, but what I wanted to draw your attention to on this one is, 
and there's probably more than one seven in here. Like I kind of, I can see one right here. It's a little hard to see, but look at, here's a seven. Um, I don't know if you remember, but um, if you, oh, here's a backwards seven right here. Um, if you've been watching me for a bit, um, there was one day when I went outside and looked up and there was a host up there and there were a bunch of sevens and I counted at least three sevens, uh, which was amazing. I see a cross right here. There's a lot going on in this picture, um, but yeah, so I see things up there, numbers, I see writing. Um, I saw something recently and I don't have a picture of it with me up here today, but it was a bunch of hosts above my house and it looked like they had the, the letters fight, F-I-G-H-T, fight. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. So anyway, there's a seven right there. All right. Um, there was a lot going on this day. This is only a few of the pictures of everything I saw that day. There's more posted on X. If you follow me on X, I post them kind of real time um, or on the same day as I see them. Um, so if you follow me on X, it's USA Beach Blonde on X. Okay, so here wanted to point out this like post here. Um, so you can see, you know, obviously the profile, this is the nose, mouth is open, like it's yelling, hairs flying out behind it. It's got its, it's got its um, hands extended like in a fist, it looks like, ready to duke it out. So. And it looks like a bunch of debris right here around it. And you see some eyes in there and stuff. So it could be that he's just busted through some, some bad stuff there. He's taken out some bad dudes. And this guy looks kind of Asian to me. Um, and it looks like he's wearing a policeman's hat. Um, so, which actually has a face on it of another host, but... These are so multifaceted here, but um, you can see kind of like slanted eyes has like the eye feature of um, like an, as someone with Asian eyes. And it looks like he has a mustache, actually. So I don't know who this is, but. Um, and it looks like he's wearing like a hat, like a policeman would wear. And those that follow me on X know that I see the number 33 a lot, um, which goes with Isaiah 10, verse 33. Um, so here's the three right here and another three right here. So again, I drew on these on my blog. So you can go there to see them drawn on. And Isaiah 10, verse 33, has to do with um, President 44, um, who is the king of Assyria in the Bible. And Isaiah 10, verse 33 says, but just when the Assyrian is in sight of his goal, which is to take us down, behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts will lop off the beautiful bows with terrorizing force. The high in stature will be hewn down and the lofty will be brought low. So he's got judgment coming. All right. So um, on April 5th, I was led to Joel 3 and I called it prepare for war. After praying in the spirit, Holy Spirit told me to go to Joel, then to turn to Joel 3 this morning. And this is the fourth time that I'm led to Joel 3. And I wrote, God is judging the nations for how they have treated his people. And he says to all who are against him, prepare for war. He will return the retaliation of his enemies back upon their heads. And he mentioned the eclipse in this scripture, in the word, in this, um, in Joel 3. So Joel 3 verses 9 through 16 and the CEV stood out to me. Say to the nations, get ready for war. Be eager to fight, line up for battle, and prepare to attack. 
Make swords out of plows and spears out of garden tools. Strengthen every weakling. Hurry, all you nations, come quickly. Ask the Lord to bring his warriors along. You must come now to Judgment Valley, where the Lord will judge the surrounding nations. They are a field of ripe crops. Bring in the harvest. They are grapes piled high. Start trampling them now. If our enemy's sins were wine, every jar would overflow. Crowds fill, does it, crowds fill Decision Valley. The judgment day of the Lord will soon be here. No light from the sun or moon and stars no longer shine. From the heart of Jerusalem, the Lord roars like a lion, shaking the earth and sky. But the Lord is a fortress, a place of safety for his people, Israel. All right, so I wrote, to further emphasize where we're at in this moment, there was an earthquake in New Jersey on this particular day um, that was 4.8, for the and the eclipse was on um, 4.8. The Statue of Liberty was struck by lightning, and the Lord has given several prophecies to Julie Green about that, and the sign of Jonah, the eclipse, was coming on Monday. All right, so uh, one particular, and one uh, one in particular, one of the words from Julie um, stood out, and it was given on 3.11. And the Lord keeps showing me 3.11 on the clock. And so I was shown 3.11 on the clock. And I'm going to see what I put. Okay. So on um, the time just before that, that I saw 3.11, I posted it with scripture from Revelation 3.11 which says, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one may rob you and deprive you of your crown. Okay, so keep that in mind. And then, so on this day, so we had the FAA um, issuing a ground stop in New York and New Jersey for airplanes because you had that... Um, that earthquake that happened there. And then um, I referenced a bunch of things I've been shown about New York um, and what's coming to New York. So the collapse of the their economic hub um, and some judgment and things coming to that area. And then um, I'm trying to reference my notes here. Okay, so some of the stuff, so Julie Green on um, March 11th had a word. So I just thought that was interesting because I keep seeing 311 and she has this word that she was given on 311, uh, which is days of judgment, destroying the works of darkness. And an excerpt from that goes, um, again, I'm mentioning the Statue of Liberty. One day you shall see it standing, but the next day there will be a collapse and then only rubble on the ground. The same goes for what the Washington Monument and many other monuments and symbols across this nation. The bull on Wall Street will be in the news, so watch as this is a sign. So if you remember last week I did the video, I had felt an unction to post that picture of the bull on Wall Street with that scripture of judgment coming to Wall Street. So this is in line with that. So I think we're probably getting very close to that. The Babylonian system will crumble to the ground and will not control the world again. Um, and that's very much in alignment, what she said there, what the Lord said there, um, with what Johnny Enlow has been saying. Um, if you've been watching Johnny Enlow on Elijah's streams on Mondays, um, if you haven't been watching him, I'd highly recommend you go back a few weeks and start where he started talking about, um, oh, what's the book? Now it's escaping my brain. Um, Enoch. The book of Enoch. So he's been talking about, Jesus is talking about the book of Enoch with him. And he's been sharing some stuff that's in there. And um, anyway, I think we've got more good stuff ahead of us. Um, and we should be looking forward to the good. Uh, and then Julie's word also said, lightning will strike a major symbol in this nation, signifying their destruction and demise. So that was from that word that she got on 311. So um, I know some of you are also seeing the number 311 on the clock. So I think God's communicating to us that, you know, these things are being judged and 
he's just reassuring us. It's coming down. Um, and then she gave some other words. Um, uh, one of her words, suddenlies are about to break out worldwide. She got that word on June 19th, 2022. This is an excerpt from that. Lightning will strike a monument and, and my children, this will signal that your enemy's destruction and fall is great and is right around the corner, saith the Lord of hosts, right around the corner. So that's lightning strike, I think, is a sign for us. So, um, and the other part of the excerpt of this that I got out of that was the time has come for the pharaohs of today to end up like the pharaohs of old. So here we are in the Exodus. Yes, my children, get prepared and get excited. My hand is moving now. It is moving quickly and your deliverance will be great. Your celebrations will be great. This is a great time for my children and I have handpicked you to be a part of this time. Your great exodus is about to be seen and felt by the entire world. So if you go to um, Julie Green's website, um, Julie Green Ministries, um, and you um, do a search for this title, Suddenlies, and she spelled it S-U-D-D-E-N-L-Y-S, Suddenlies are about to break out worldwide. June 19, 2022 was that word. And then she has another word um, from one that's called justice will prevail and justice will be served. And that's from February 10th, 2022. And it referenced the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is about to fall. The crack is getting bigger and it will crumble to the ground. Watch the lightning hit some monuments across this land. This is to show you that I am in control. And I am destroying all evidence of your enemy's tyranny and control on this earth. So that's awesome. So again, if you go to Julie Green's website and you search in her prophecies, justice will prevail and justice will be served. February 10, 2022. Um, okay. Prophetic numbers. When I posted this on X today, I received a timestamp of 1116. Um, and I found a, Isaiah 1116 confirms the message. And it seems like I got this. Oh, this is funny. I'm just noticing this now that I got the same scripture twice this week to confirm a message. How funny is that? Um, okay, so the message is God is rescuing us from the wicked. This is Exodus all over again, but on a much larger scale. Praise the Lord and declare your freedom. So again, 11 is judgment upon disorder, disintegration, transition to a new era. And 16 is the love of God. He's doing all of this because he loves us. And just a reminder, Isaiah 11, verse 16 in the CEV is then for his people who survive, there will be a good road from Assyria, just as there was a good road for their ancestors when they left Egypt. So that's cool. I got that same scripture twice. Sometimes I don't notice patterns until I'm actually putting it all together in these notes and um, notice it as I go here. On April 6, I was led to Haggai 2, and I titled it, Our Deliverance is at Hand. So I wrote, Holy Spirit led me to Haggai 2 this morning, and I felt a strong presence of the Lord. So I did. Um, I felt like I could almost have gone to sleep. It was so like a heavy blanket. Um, and I wrote, God is about to shake all of heaven and earth to destroy ungodly nations and deliver us from the bondage of slavery. For those who choose to love and obey him, he will give peace and prosperity. Um, and I felt on this day to post a picture of the camel, like the camels are coming. Um, and I went and I looked up information about the wealth transfer. And I got an excerpt here um, from, um, there's a website from Kurt Landry Ministries. Um, I will put it in the link. Uh, in the description box um, for you to go to. It's very good information about how we should posture ourselves with regard to the wealth transfer and what it's what the wealth transfer is really all about. So here's an excerpt from it. When we talk about the wealth transfer, it is not about how big or how much we can get. On the contrary, it is about how small we can get for now, for how large, okay, let me say that again. On the contrary, it is about how small we can get for how large the Lord will manifest his glory. We must become less and he must become more. 
The, the wealth transfer and the great commission are tied together. The focus is to bring glory to the one true God. There is a power that is coming. The Lord is transferring wealth to the ones that will show Jesus to others. The transfer will not go to those who build themselves up, but to those who focus, whose focus is on the saving power of Yeshua's blood. So Haggai 2 verses 5 through 9 and 19 in the Amplified Classic stood out to me. According to the promise that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit stands and abides in the midst of you. Fear not. For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once more in a little while I will shake and make tremble the starry heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. And I will shake all nations and the desire and the precious things of all nations shall come in and I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, said the, says the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house with its successor to which Jesus came shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace and prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. Is the harvested grain any longer in the barn? As to the grapevine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree, they have not yet borne. From this day on, I will bless you. All right, so... Um, I had a confirmation later on in the evening, somebody, um, Isabella Aucard, um, tagged me on X and said that Mike Thompson had just released a video that day, same day. Um, and it is called a prophet's decree about your prosperity. So Mike Thompson, um, is a prophet and he had a word from the Lord on April 5th, but he released it on the 6th. Um, and I'll put a, um, the link for that in the description box. You can go and watch it. Um, and he was sharing what he heard from the Lord about our prosperity and the wealth transfer that's at hand. So um, we the wealth transfer is at hand. So um, I encourage you to go and read what Kurt Landry wrote on his um, site and also listen to Mike Thompson about that. And then I also saw some more signs and wonders that day. And this one I do have drawing on for you, as you can see, because it's a little bit hard to tell without the drawing. But there's a sun dog here on the left. So the arrow pointing to that. There's a big sun dog. And then so there's a host right here and one right next to it. And it's kind of cute. They're just up there hanging out. You can see their eyes. So this is the eye. This is the nose and the mouth. You can see a little bit of breath coming out. It's like they're talking. And when they talk, like you can see the breath coming out. And then this one, um, it looks like his eyes are right here, but he may have more than two eyes um, because you can clearly see his eyes like look at this one right here you can see that's an eye so um i don't know what this is here if it's another eye or if it's part of his nose i'm not sure so it looks like his eyes are actually right here or like i said he could have more than more than he could have more than two eyes because we've heard in scripture that some of the hosts have tons of eyes um so, and then here's his mouth right here. So they're both smiling. All right. And then when I posted this next one on X, someone said it was like waves of glory coming. So there was like all this rainbow cloud, which was really neat. And it's hard for you to see in this picture. So I'll make it bigger. Um, it's hard, it's very faint, but you can see eyes right here. Big eyes. This one's neat. Um, it's a host right here, you can see. You can see his eye right here, 
his nose, his mouth. You can see breath coming out of his mouth. Like he's yelling at something. And look at this, look at the muscle on this guy. Look at this arm and you can see like this muscle right here. And look at this huge fist. Like he's knocking something out. And these guys are over here like, whoa. So you can see his knuckles. You see them here. So on my blog, you can see where I've drawn on him. And here's a big lion. So here's the eye, eye, here's the nose, and his mouth is here, his mouth is open. And he takes up most of the sky. Okay, so then on April 7th, I was led to Daniel 2. I called it God's government and kingdom are coming. His rule will never end. And I wrote, after praying in the spirit with eyes closed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit led me to Daniel 2 today for the second time. And as I'm typing this, I wrote, and referencing my post on my phone, I see the time is 222. God reveals in Daniel 2, that he is the most high God. He rules over all the kings of the earth. And that in the latter days, which is now, we're living in the latter days, the kingdom of God is coming and it shall never end. Babylon has fallen, fallen. So again, that's confirmation of what Johnny Enlow has been sharing with us um, with regard to what he's finding in the scriptures all through the Bible in Daniel, Enoch, um, in different places, um, just the true, um, the true eschatology, the true doctrine that the Lord wants shared in this time, um, you know, which is that good stuff is coming. He's taking down evil in our day and we are arising within our authority as the children of God to rule and reign with Christ. So amazing, like, just blows my mind every day to get up. I, I like literally wake up in the morning and go, wow, we're living in the latter days. We're living in this time. Like it went from like the sadness and the, the fear and the anxiety and the, the awfulness of COVID and all that lockdown and stuff and has just progressed to now like, oh, wait a second. <gasps> There's a lot more going on here than what I thought was going on. Like God is real and is doing a thing. Oh my goodness. It's just the coolest thing to wake up every day now. And just like, I literally wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Like super glad in it. And I just go like, what is he going to show me today? What am I going to see? What is he, what is he going to show me in the word? You know, I mean, Oh, I just, mm. it's amazing. Okay, let's see if I can talk. All right, here we go. Um, so I did, I found um, a blog. And it's by Philadelphia Church of God. Um, and it was about the Daniel 2 vision. And I got this excerpt out of it. Um, I'll include the link for it because I feel like it's really good information. And it said, you cannot deeply understand the four world ruling kingdoms from Daniel, uh, from the dream of Nebuchadnezzar that Daniel interpreted. You cannot deeply understand the four world ruling kingdoms unless you understand the fifth world ruling kingdom, but that kingdom is virtually invisible to most people. It can be easy to stop the legs of the iron and only count four kingdoms, but there are clearly five mentioned here. 
If we fail to see the fifth kingdom, we're missing the whole point. What happens to the gold, silver, and brass when the stone smashes the ten toes? In Daniel 2, verse 35. Not just the toes are destroyed. Everything is carried away with the wind. Remember, the image is Babylonian all the way through. The entire system is destroyed. Then the kingdom of God becomes a great mountain, filling the whole earth. We are living during the time of the toes, and the stone that shatters them is about to fill the whole earth. Jesus Christ is going to smash the great image, break it into pieces. Then the image becomes as chaff left from the wheat and is blown away. Everything not part of God's family has this deplorable end. It's all about establishing the God family on this earth. This is what we live for. The whole purpose of this dream was to reveal God's government. So Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The whole purpose of it was to reveal God's government. The fact that God rules the truth of the kingdom of God, the very thing that is the one and only true gospel of Jesus Christ. And secondly, to reveal, preserved in writing for us today, what is to happen in the latter days. So that was a super awesome article. So I'll put that link for you. Um, and then prophetic numbers and connections. So every morning, thought this was kind of cool too. Oh boy. And then something happened last night with regard to this too, um, with a video. I was led to a video. Oh my goodness. Okay. Like I said, the Lord is constantly like dialed in with me and like listening to my heart, listening to my questions, listening to my desires. <laughs> and then he is bringing me information. So every morning when I pray, um, when I'm before I invite Holy Spirit um, to lead me to scripture, I say this prayer. Um, and it's there's a private place reserved for the devoted lovers of Yahweh where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. And that's Psalm 25, verse 14 in the Passion Translation. So I noticed when I read Daniel 2, so when I, whenever I'm led to the scripture, I declare it with my voice. And when I was led to Daniel 2, I noticed this, listen to this. And this is this verse is Daniel 2, 2, 2. <laughs> so remember when I first like was led to the scripture today, I saw 2, 2, 2 on my clock. Okay, this is Daniel 2, 2, 2. Listen to this. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. He reveals the deep and secret things. Okay. Then it goes on. So Daniel 2, verse 28 and 29. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what it is that shall be in the latter days at the end of days. Your dream and the visions in your head upon your bed are these. As for you, O king, as you were lying upon your bed, thoughts came into your mind about what should come to pass hereafter. And he who reveals secrets was making known to you what shall come to pass. <laughs> so three times there, he, three, the perfect number of completion, right? He um, talks about those secrets, which is that prayer that I pray every day. So I just was like, that's amazing. Um, and then last night I was led to a video by Rachel Ham on listening to God's voice. And she started talking about that she was also praying that same prayer and God was telling her, I do it at my own good pleasure. <laughs> quit trying to quit trying, quit, you know, pestering me on it. <laughs> anyway, I mean, and she like spent a good amount of time on it. I was like, I can't even believe that. Like of all the videos I could have picked to listen to is that one on the same day. Amazing. Um, So obviously two, the number two is being emphasized. So, I, you know, Daniel two, it's the second time that I'm led there. I saw two, two, two on the clock. Uh, the scriptures two, two, two. Okay. 
So two is a faithful witness and being set apart, godly division, the manifest power and testimony of God. Two, two, two is a complete witness, signs, miracles, and wonders. Um, and an interesting tidbit I got from um, Troy Brewer's book on biblical numbers, American revivals tend to be poured out on dates with the number 222. On 22 in 19, on 222, February 22nd in 1906, William Seymour arrived in Los Angeles, the city of angels in the Azusa Street Revival, the greatest move of the Holy Spirit on this side of the world began. Our nation's birthday in 1776 is on, um, that 1776 is actually two times two times two or times two, two, two. <laughs> and then George Washington's birthday is February 22nd, 222, 17, the year 1732. So that's kind of interesting. When I posted the message on X, I received a timestamp of 1120, which confirmed the message. So again, 11, God's judgment upon disorder, disintegration, and things falling apart. God stamps number 11 when he's recognizing victorious attributes of his people, when his people win huge battles of faith. 11 is associated with mighty deeds and extraordinary acts, which I believe we're going to see a lot of that in our day, which we already are seeing. 20 is waiting and expectancy. 20 is associated with prayer and expecting God to do something. It is associated with the prophetic, a person of God having the inside scoop and waiting for it. Isn't that something that's kind of referring to secrets again, right? Him revealing his secrets. Personal revelation and serving God until its fulfillment. 20 is the sum of 10 times 2, a witness that God has ordered something. Um, and an interesting little tidbits I got from Troy Brewer's book, there are 20 dreams in the Bible and there are 20 visions in the Bible. So that's very interesting. So that book um, by Troy Brewer, information about that is in the description box. And then on that same morning, I let the dog out first thing in the morning. And this was actually before I was led to the scripture. Um, and as I opened my front door to let my dog outside to go to the bathroom, I noticed a live monarch sitting there at the entrance to my home. It didn't budge. It just stayed right there. And I got up close to it, took pictures, video, all the things. And I was like, okay, this has to be a sign. So I did some research to see what the Lord might be communicating through this sign. And it has a lot to do with the number four. Um, so somebody did a biblical like research on the monarch butterfly and there's an article and I'll put a I'll put a link for it in the description box for you. Um so it has a lot to do with the number 4 which is dalet. So dalet in Hebrew is the number 4. We are in the year of 4. We're in the year of um the open door. Dalet is door, open door. So I believe that this monarch butterfly is telling me something about my open door. So I opened my front door and there was this butterfly, which represents an open door. <laughs> is that the coolest thing? Like God is so cool how he communicates really and truly. This is an excerpt from that. Um, the reason for studying the number four, she wrote, I hope to exhibit in this writing how the life cycle of a monarch butterfly and its process of transformation illustrates and parallels transformative processes in creation, the human heart, and biblical text. This will also be an exhaustive study on the number four, as it categorizes these same concepts throughout the entirety of scripture. It's a very good, I mean, it's amazing how I found that. Um, but anyway, all right, so April 8th, I was led to Jeremiah 4. Um, Return to the Lord with all that is in you. And I wrote, while praying in the spirit this morning, I felt the weighty presence of the Lord and intense peace again. I could have gone to sleep. Holy Spirit instructed me to open my Bible to a random page. And then I turned one page and I found myself at Jeremiah 4. And I wrote, a warning to turn back to the Lord with all that is in you. Repent and eliminate every idol in your life. Those that do will experience security, restored relationship with God, his goodness and blessings. Sobering judgment awaits those who do not. 
And Jeremiah 4, verses 1 through 4 and 11 through 18 in the CEV stood out to me. The Lord said, Israel, if you really want to come back to me, get rid of those disgusting idols. Make promises only in my name and do what you promise. Then all nations will praise me and I will bless them. People of Jerusalem and Judah, don't be so stubborn. Your hearts have become hard like unplowed ground where thorn bushes grow. With all your hearts, keep the agreement I made with you. But if you are stubborn and keep on sinning, my anger will burn like fire that cannot be put out. When disaster comes, the Lord will tell you, people of Jerusalem, I am sending a windstorm from the desert, not a welcome breeze, and it will sweep you away as punishment for your sins. Look, the enemy army swoops down like an eagle. Their cavalry and chariots race faster than storm clouds blown by the wind. Then you will answer, we are doomed. But Jerusalem, there is still time for you to be saved. Wash the evil from your hearts and stop making sinful plans before a message of disaster arrives from the hills of Ephraim and the town of Dan. The Lord said, tell the nations that my people have rebelled against me, and so an army will come from far away to surround Jerusalem and the towns of Judah. I, the Lord, have spoken. People of Judah, your hearts will be in pain, but it is your own fault that you will be punished. So we're in a window of time. We've heard um, various different people in the prophetic world here um, talk about, you know, hear from the Lord, talk about the need to repent. We're in a window of time between Purim and Passover, and this eclipse was a sign of Jonah. And it is um, a sign to repent, not to be in fear. Um, not to fear anything of the enemy. We have authority. We take authority over every power of the enemy and every scheme of the enemy. We call it down to nothing. Um, and we trust in our Lord. He fights for us and vengeance is his. But we do need to repent. And we need to repent on behalf of our nation, not just behalf of yourself, but just humble yourself and just say, Lord, you know, right now we can just pray together as a corporately as a group and just say, Lord, we repent. We repent on behalf of the sins of this nation, on behalf of all the idolatry of this nation that has defiled us and defiled our land. We ask for your mercy and your, and your grace, Lord, for mercy to triumph over judgment. In Jesus' name, amen. So I had prophetic numbers and confirmations. When I posted this on X, I received a timestamp of 1118, which confirmed the message. We are in a time of judgment upon disorder and transition to God's kingdom era, which is 11 and choosing life abundantly or the bondage of sin. That's 18. So you're choosing uh, which side of the fence are you on? There is no middle ground. You're either on team God or you're on team Satan. All right. And then I received a reply from somebody on X. His um, The name of his handle is the day of the Lord is at hand. Um, it's J Bartle or no, J Bartlett 08 on X at J Bartlett 08 on X. Um, and he was shown the same thing that morning. So he um, posted confirmation and he was also shown the number 1111 at the same time. Okay. Um, and then when I went to reference what I had posted on X in order to put it up on the blog, the time on my phone was 555. I can't even begin to tell you like how crazy it is, these timestamps. Um, they just happen. I, I feel like almost like God has me on puppet strings, you know, do this, do that, do it right now. <laughs> Pick up your phone right now. Um, it's amazing. So five is the grace of God, unmerited favor. God gives us the ability to overcome the valley of the shadow of death. Five, 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 we have complete grace in Christ Jesus who died for our sins. When we confess our sins and ask for forgiveness, God forgets them. He forgets our sins completely. He's asking us to humble ourselves, seek his face, confess our sins so he can wash us clean. His glory is coming to earth and his very presence in nature, and he is holy. So Christ is found 555 times in the King James New Testament. That's from Troy Brewer's book. Thank you, Troy Brewer. 
Um, and then also on this day, I found that Wanda Elger, I talked about her a minute ago, had um, shared a prophetic dream on April 2nd, 2024. Um, and also Diana Larkin shared a word from her prayer journal on um, April 7th, 2024, called the Fire of Purification, uh, which we're about to experience. So welcome God's fire to burn out anything that is in you that is not of him. And I'll put the links for uh, the link for Wanda Elgers um, and you can follow um, Diana Larkin. I think it's at journal. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember her handle <laughs> on X, but you all probably follow her because I think a lot of you came um, over from her when I was on her um, channel and she interviewed me and came over here. So, you know, Diana, um, I will post a link to her blog. I think what I'll do will be easier than to trying to post it to X. Um, so you can see that post, but I'll read it here too. So um, this is an excerpt taken from that Wanda Elger um, dream that she had. She calls it Code Red, Prepare for a Corporate Baptism of Fire. And she wrote, these fires will emerge from the whirlwind of his presence referring to Isaiah 66 verse 15 and Nahum verse uh, 1 verse 3. It is out of the whirlwind, whirlwind that he will speak and he will act. That's from Job 40 verse 6. Watch for the whirlwinds as they will be signs of his dealings. Many have known and experienced the baptism of his spirit, but this baptism of fire will yield even greater manifestations of his kingdom authority on the earth. And that refers to Matthew 3 verses 11 through 12. All that has hindered and delayed his advance will be removed. All who have stood in the way and defied his commands will know their end. Do not concern yourself with timetables or timelines. Merely yield to heaven's work in this hour. It is unto the knowledge of his glory that the fires must burn and his people must pass through. That's a very powerful word. Um, and I strongly encourage you to read it and, um, Sorry, I just hit my computer. Um, strongly encourage you to read it. Um, and then this is on April 7th, 2024 from Diana Larkin. And it's small print, so bear with me here. Um, the Fire of God. She wrote, as I was waiting in the Father's presence to hear what he wanted to speak to us this morning, I began smelling smoke. Something was burning. Then the Father spoke, the Fire of God. My fire is released on the earth as I continue to shake, to awake, and to expose hidden dark secrets. My fire will be both natural and spiritual. The natural fires will burn down buildings, monuments, and churches that are serving the darkness. These man-made idolatrous structures will be consumed by my fires of judgment, and the land will be cleansed. I will also release my supernatural fire to burn up the pride of man and to disintegrate the demonic platforms that have held them up. You will see the elite cry out as I burn them up internally. Whoa. My spiritual fire will also be released on my people. It will burn away false motives of fame, greed, and impure desires. It will burn up man-made doctrines that have been sown into the church by the religious spirit of outward conformity instead of inner transformation and intimacy with me. My fire will torch those doctrines that were sown into the church by the darkness, especially end times teachings that focus my people of, of light on escape rather than learning to rule and reign by taking authority over the darkness and by helping to establish foundations of justice and righteousness. That's referring to a lot of the stuff that Johnny Enlo has been sharing and teaching on Elijah streams on Mondays. So I encourage you to listen to that. My fire prepares a way before me and out of the ashes, I will rebuild something of purity and beauty. Welcome my fire into your world, into the church and into your hearts. My fire brings forth gold and new life. Awesome. That's a powerful word. And then I have some more signs and wonders here to show you. And these were from the day of the eclipse. Okay, so this one is a lion. And I'm making bigger so you can see. Here's his eye. The other eye's over here. Here's his nose, this area. 
and here's his chin and his mouth is open. So you can see him here. So here's his head right here and his eye, his nose area, his mouth is open. Here's his chin. Okay. It looks like he's flying through the air. So that was over the backyard. And then this one here um, is, it's a, um, it looks like a female, but it's hard to say because um, I don't think angels or hosts have genders. So I'm not sure if they do or not, to be honest. Um, but you can see her here, her or it. <laughs> so you can see the eye, nose, mouth is open, chin. Bunch of hair back here, it looks like. Not sure if this is good or evil. Could be a marine spirit. We're close to the water over here, so. We see a lot of marine spirits around this area. Which, of course, I rebuke and take authority over. They have no power over me or my family. Thank you, Lord. All right, this is a big host right here. Um, and... You can see his eye right here. Here's his nose. Here's his lips right here. And he's breathing, he's got breath coming out. There's a demon right here, looks like, or another host. So hard to tell if they're hanging out together. Um. Oh, actually, you know what? This is his, it looks like this is his, well, yeah, I guess this is his mouth. He might have two mouths <laughs> or there's another host in front of him here because um, it looks like there's another mouth right here. So anything's possible with these creatures. God's creation is amazing. Okay, now here's the amazing thing I saw um, in my backyard. This was just incredible. So the first one I've drawn on, um, and so um, I've drawn on the face. Here's the eyes, nose, mouth, and the chin. Okay, so I'll go to the next picture. Okay, so um, this appeared in the sky, and it it um, looks like there's a lion below him. There's the eyes, nose, and stuff. But this is Jesus. And um, you can see his eyes pretty clearly right here. I'll show you another picture. I um, edited the lighting on it so you can see a little more clearly. Here's the nose. Here's his mouth. You can see his beard. And you can see the crown of thorns right here. Let me go to the next picture, which has different um, editing on it for lighting. And you can see a little bit more clearly um, the crown of thorns right here. So you can see like the thorns coming out. You can see this eye more clearly here now with this um, editing on it. And when I say editing, I just mean editing the brightness and the, the lighting characteristics. You can actually, things, features pop out differently. So that's Jesus. Jesus showed up on the day of the eclipse. The day was about him, not about the enemy, which is amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So um, I don't think I've posted him yet up on my blog, but I will be as soon as I get a moment to get him up there. But he is on my screensaver on my phone now. I use that as my screensaver. Amazing. Like, I've been asking to see him, like, what do you look like? 
you know, he's been showing me. All right. So today I was shown Isaiah 10, woe to the Assyrian. After praying in the spirit, I heard Holy Spirit instruct me to open my Bible to a random page. I did so with my eyes closed. Then he said to turn five pages to Isaiah 10. And this is the 15th time. Verse 5 immediately popped off the page, then verses 12, 24, and 33. And I'm also being shown this on the ninth. Nine is judgment. So I wrote, woe to the Assyrian, B-H-O, Prez 44. Do not fear, the Lord says, although B-H-O does not realize it, God is using him as his rod of correction and will only allow him to go so far with his wicked plans and no further then god will deal with the assyrian god will deal with him so verse five woe to the assyrian the rod of my anger the staff in whose hand is my indignation and fury against israel's disobedience I send the assyrian against a hypocritical and godless nation and against the people of my wrath I, com I command him to take the spoil and to seize the prey and to tread them down like the mire in the streets. However, this is not his intention, nor is the Assyrian aware that he is doing this at my bidding. Neither does his mind so think and plan, but it is in his mind to destroy and cut off many nations. Verse 12, therefore, when the Lord has completed all his work of chastisement and purification to be executed on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, it shall be that he will inflict punishment on the fruit, the thoughts, words, and deeds of the stout and arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the haughtiness of his pride. Verse 24, therefore, thus says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrian who smites you with a rod and lifts up his staff against you as the king of Egypt did. Verse 33, but just when the Assyrian is in sight of his goal, behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts will lop off the beautiful bows with terrorizing force. The high in stature will be hewn down and the lofty will be brought low. And that's that number that I see all the time, that 33. So, um, you know, with that, I think God's saying he sees and knows all. There is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. His righteous judgment and justice are coming. And I posted in the early hours of the morning that I had seen 33. I had seen it twice yesterday. And so I posted it and I had no idea that when I was posting it with that scripture, I just said Isaiah 10, 33, that I was posting it at 333. Amazing. I mean, blows my mind when I see that stuff happen. I'm just like, holy smokes, that happened. Okay, so then... Um, so for, as far as prophetic numbers, um, I was told turn five pages, um, verse five popped off the screen. So five is being highlighted, highlighted. Also, this is the 15th time that I'm shown this scripture. So five is the grace of God gives us the ability to overcome the valley of the shadow of death. We're given the authority of Christ to conquer any situation the enemy would use to try to take us out. God gives us the strength to overcome bullies. He helps us overcome what seems insurmountable. Grace is for the underdogs. 15 is five plus five plus five. So it's grace multiplied. So complete grace, rest and overcoming death. By God's grace, we overcome death. We rule and reign by the power of Christ. And then this little tidbit from Troy Brewer's book. When Noah was on the ark, the waters rose to 15 cubits above the highest mountain before the ark rested on the mount mountains of Ararat. And then in 2 Kings 20, Hezekiah was given 15 additional years of life. He overcame a timeline by grace. Um, and then the numbers that were standing out, 12, 24, and 33, um, 12 being God's perfect government and authority. God is actively ruling and reigning over his creation. God is the king of kings. 24 is a witness to God's 
perfect government. God's perfect government is being made manifest on the earth. We worship when we witness God's perfection. We are encircled and protected. So a tidbit on that, the 24 elders always fall down in worship because they see God as king. And then 33, God keeps his promises. God says yes, and we say amen. Uh, Abraham had Isaac at age 99, which is 33 times three. Interesting. And then Numbers 33 in the Bible lists steps to enter the promises of God. So that's interesting. God recognizes there's a problem on earth and he says, I am going to fix it. In fact, I will be the fixer of the problem is what Troy Brewer explained on his um, video on propheticnumbers.com about the number 33. He said, there will be a child that is born of a woman who is a virgin, the seed of the woman, which is an impossibility in the natural. And it came to pass. And that child, Jesus Christ, grew. And at age 33, he kept his promise to save humanity when he gave up his life on the cross for our sins. So as I was typing this and referencing Troy's video on um, the number 33 on my phone, uh, my phone went into silent mode. And when I went to go back and look um, at what what's the rest that um, Troy Brewer said, when he said the part about um, Jesus giving up his life for our sins. And I picked up my phone at that time. The phone said one, two, three. So I took a screenshot of it. This is pretty wild. So it was a confirmation, but look at my new. So this is my new screensaver. I've got Jesus in my backyard on my screensaver. I can't even tell you. And then, um, I was listening to Troy Brewer, God keeping his promises. You can see that's on here. And I went to go pick it up. Um, and he had just said that part and it's one, two, three. Wow. All right. So I just want to take a moment now, um, for any of you who are watching that haven't given your heart to Jesus or accepted Jesus as your personal savior, this is the time to do it. Don't waste waste another minute of life without being under the blessings and the protection of Jesus Christ, who's the son of God who died for your sins and is the way it's, he's the way, the truth and the life. And he's, he's the way that you are forgiven for your sins. Um, so that you can come under protection and the blessings of the Lord, um, and all the good things that are coming. Cause there's a lot of good things coming. So say this prayer with me. You don't want to miss out on what's coming. Father God, I recognize I am a sinner. I come to you asking forgiveness of my sins. I confess in my heart and speak with my mouth that Jesus Christ is your son. And he died on the cross for my sins. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my heart, my soul, and my life. I accept Jesus as my personal Savior, and I praise you for making a way for me. I declare by the blood of Jesus that I am saved. Jesus, I invite you into my heart, into my life, and I pray you continue to reveal your love to me by your Holy Spirit. I ask you to have your way with my life. And I thank you for the new creation that you have made me. All right. So in closing, um, we are going to um, declare something from this book, which I love, Brenda Kuhneman. Thank you so much, Brenda Kuhneman. Daily Decrees for Government and Nations. And it's called Heavenly Hosts Released. So be in agreement with me as I declare this. We decree a release of angelic activity over our nation. As the people of God, the angels, our servants sent forth from heaven to work on our behalf. And therefore we release them on assignment for this nation. We call upon heaven for a commissioning of the host to go forth and cover the United States of America and keep it from evil. We stand in confident assurance because of the work of angelic forces all around us. They are standing against the principalities' powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. 
The angels are obstructing the work of the destroyer, and they are making this nation safe. The angels shall keep us from all manner of destruction and terror. We call for the angels to wage war in the gates over Washington, D.C., and drive out the demonic strongholds from our White House, Capitol, Supreme Court, Pentagon, and from all historical sites and monuments. We say the angels are warring in the seats of government all across this land. We call for the angelic armies to protect this nation from the effects of war and international conflict. Let the angels be posted in all key areas in every state, region, city, and we prophesy, let the angels of God be released in the United States of America. In Jesus' name, amen. And we'll stand on Hebrews 1, verse 14 in the New Living Translation. Therefore, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. In Psalm 103, 20 in the King James Version, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today for this video, and I will see you on the next one. I love you guys a lot, and just keep armored up. Remain in your authority. Have no fear. Pray the word. See you next time.